What we're trying to do is to democratise mental fitness. For years and years, mental fitness techniques and tools have been kind of for either professional athletes or executives. For a lot of people, mental fitness might be quite a, a new concept. If they haven't got experience of mental health issues themselves, they think, right, well, this isn't for me. For too long, when we've spoken about mental health, we've only spoken about it, about those negative aspects of, of, of depression or anxiety or trauma. But it's not the full story. These exercises, these techniques, these tools, this concept of mental fitness, these are for everybody. This is like everybody should be doing physical exercise. Everybody should be going to the gym or getting outside or going for a run or whatever is in their ability to do. But everyone should be physically active, not just to stave off heart disease or arthritis or, or the nasties, but also just because it helps you to be the best version of yourself. And that's exactly what we're doing with these mental fitness tools. You incorporate these tools into your life and it's all about becoming the best version of you. Nathan and I have been mates for, for a long time. Uh, we probably met about 10 years ago. For both of us, sport was an important part in advancing our own recovery and our rehabilitation. And part of that was uh, the Invictus Games. So we both represented uh, the United Kingdom uh, Armed Forces and became friends through sport. After a number of years, we actually came together uh, professionally. And we started working on a number of programs and, and projects together in the role that I had at the time at the Royal Foundation of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. We were looking at the, the mental health provision in the UK Armed Forces. There was an awful lot of reparatory stuff looking after people who had suffered from trauma, from anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress, but very little preemptive care, tools, resources. We then created this package of tools and techniques that we could then deliver that would resonate across a military audience um, in order for them to perform to their best. What we wanted to do was make this accessible to as many people as possible. We've got the backing of Prince Harry with his background in mental health and mental fitness promotion. You know, we can then utilize this and get into all of these different communities, all the communities, the communities that he's touched over the years. Peak State is striving to build a global community that understands the importance of mental fitness and feels empowered to attain it. Everyone's entitled to perform at their best, no matter where they are. So a lot of these tools are perhaps things that you do anyway, instinctively. But what we do is help you to develop them and refine them and consciously and proactively um, adopt them into a mental fitness regime. You're looking at your, your thoughts, behaviours, feelings, actions and how these various areas work together and against each other. You might use grounding techniques, you might use breathing techniques, you might do a gratitude exercise. All these different exercises, when used together,
on my chest, just just below my clavicle. And because I was um, sort of prone to the ground, sort of parallel to the ground, came in this sort of trajectory, um, entered here, traveled the length of my torso, hit my back, hit my, hit my ribs, and just bounced around my rib cage for a bit before coming to rest in my right lung. We're, we're flying from RF Bryce Norton to Camp Bastion in then went through the recovery journey that I'm still on now. When I returned from Afghanistan, I had some horrendous experiences, not just being shot myself and, and very badly wounded and nearly dying on the battlefield, um, but also seeing people die seeing people being horrifically um, uh, wounded, um, dealing with, with those casualties, dealing with the dead, um, and, uh, and, and, and just living in constant threat for, for, for long periods of time. So coming back, my threat system was in overdrive. And for years, this is what I'm talking about, years, um, fear dominated. As that started to subside, um, it was taken over by my drive system. What started off as a coping strategy and ended up becoming a negative coping strategy was to throw myself into work just to keep those intrusive thoughts at bay. Always striving, always trying to win. And so my drive system went into overdrive. And you can't live like that for very long. You can live like that for quite a while, but like anybody else who has experienced um, an overactive drive system, I experienced burnout. Those years of experiencing high threat, high drive, and being hugely dominant, after coming out of the back of both of those um, overactive systems, I now realize how important the Soothe system is at keeping everything in check. That doesn't mean that you can't use that threat system when it's required. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't be driven and use that um, and, and bring that, that system into play when, when it's needed, but you really, really need that SUE system to keep it all in balance. And a lot of the Peak State tools are based on that understanding of the importance of the SUE system. Then you're, you're already you know, halfway there. When I was forced to become vulnerable, 
through my injuries and my experiences that opened me up to the awareness and subsequent understanding of mental fitness and how important it is um, for unlocking potential, increasing performance and improving well-being.